that this morning our pop-up choir is going to be singing Blessed Assurance, which is hymn number 369. If you would like to join in singing, you are invited to do so. The words will not be on the slides, so there are these really cool books in your pews. And so you are invited to sing with us, just remaining in your seats if you would like to. Good morning, St. B. I'll direct your attention to the back of the bulletin. We have a few announcements. July 3rd, this coming Wednesday, Anne's Closet will be open from 11 to 1 p.m. in Heritage Hall. We are in need of green beans, corn, and tuna. On July 4th, everyone's invited to celebrate Independence Day with St. B, bringing their fireworks, a picnic dinner, and the fun will start at 5.30. We will have water games, tie-dye, ice cream, and we'll shoot fireworks when it gets dark. Join us for an evening of fellowship. Also on July 4th, remember the office will be closed in service of Independence Day. Some upcoming events, I believe Tuesday of next week, July 9th, and or circle meeting will be at 10.30 a.m. And Friday, July 12th, night circle meeting at 6.30 p.m. If you don't receive the newsletters via email, there are some available at the front entrance. You can also pick up a copy at either sanctuary entrance of the Upper Room Daily Devotional. And please, as always, fill out your attendance pad at the end of your pew so we know that you are here to worship with us today. Good morning. A quick note about Thursday, July 4th. You might notice that you are invited to bring a picnic dinner, which is a little bit different than what we have normally done. Instead of asking Rob to stand in front of a hot grill for hours on end, 
when we all know just how warm it has been. We are inviting you to bring your own dinner. The grill will be hot if you would like to stand in front of the grill. And so you are invited to bring your own dinner for your family. If you would like to bring extra to share, you are absolutely invited to do so. If you remember also last year, the ice cream we made in Ziploc bags, and as much fun as that was, Pastor Corey underestimated how long it takes and how much endurance your arms need to make homemade ice cream in Ziploc bags. And so ice cream will be pre-made and provided. <laughs> as far as tie-dye goes, we will have all of the dyes available. We also have t-shirts. If you would like to tie-dye something other than a t-shirt, you are invited to bring that item, but we do have white t-shirts available for tie-dye. And he also sounds excited about the tie-dye. And now, most importantly, whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Beloved, when hope is high, abundance surrounds us, and we bask in the goodness of God's provision. God calls us when disaster strikes, need overwhelms the senses, and we carry the weight and worry of a perilous present and unknown future. God calls to us. Open your heart. When we are moved with compassion, our hearts urging us to reach out to support our siblings in Christ, God calls to us. Children of God, as we gather today, listen. God calls us to open our hearts and our hands to one another in need and in abundance. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 592 when the church when the church of Jesus we will be singing it to the tune of 273 which is Jesus hands were kind hands Margaret will play it through and then we will sing the all three verses together
Please remain standing as we affirm our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. living and faithful spirit, the God in whom we live and move and have our being, the God who is made known in Christ Jesus. Bless us one and all as we wait on you this day. Please remove from our minds and hearts whatever impediments hinder worship or dampen our joy. Increase within us that holy longing for closeness, which can open our lives to fuller delight and to a deeper commitment. May our hymns and prayers, our searching thoughts, and our hearing of the scriptures be an exercise in the holiest love-making. By you, with you, and for you, may our lives publish your praise. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. You may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 340, Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy.
Today's scripture reading can be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it in a, according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much. And the one who had little did not have too little. Word of God for the people of God. Looking at his disciples, Jesus said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you. For that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. This morning, we hear Paul urging the church in Corinth to make good on their word, to collect an offering to support the city, to support the church in the mother city in Jerusalem as they care for the poor in the capital city. The money, though, is not simply the only point. Instead, it's about how the followers of Jesus lived out their generosity as a reflection of their faith. And in her commentary on today's text, Carla Works, New Testament professor at Wesley Theological Seminary, writes, how believers use their resources, time, money, talents, and attention, is a reflection of what they believe about God and God's actions in the world. Furthermore, how those resources are used preaches a message to others. Paul wants the Corinthians' actions to be a reflection of the gospel in which they believe. Last week, we heard an invitation not to receive God's grace in vain. That the grace we receive should not be experienced as empty. And this week, we are invited to allow that grace to be seen in our lives and announced to the church as a whole. 
And the Corinthian offering, the Corinthian church, has started collecting this offering a year prior. They had committed to it, and Paul had used their commitment to get the Macedonian church on board. And the Macedonian church was excelling. And so Paul is encouraging the church in Corinth to see it through. And as I have reflected on this text this week and this idea of all of these churches gathering money to send to Jerusalem, I haven't been able to stop thinking about the question, but what about the poor people here? What about those in need in Corinth, in our town? Why would we help someone on the other side of the world instead of helping those on the other side of the street? What about our lives? Don't they matter too? As our understanding of the world continuously changes, as does our understanding of giving, And I promise that this is not about to be a crazy stewardship sermon where I pound my fists on the pulpit and say, none of you are giving enough. We don't have enough. Because we, I think that as we end our third year together, you all know me well enough to know that that isn't really my style of preaching or how I believe about giving at all. But we are going to talk a little bit about giving because that's kind of what the text invites us to. And so as we get into the giving portion of today's TED Talk, I want to affirm this congregation. Because as I thought about all those questions that I had about those near to us and those on the other side of the world. I thought about the way that we as St. Bethlehem United Methodist Church have offered our gifts both to our neighbors and to our community and to those a world away from us. I thought about the funds we raise for SAFE so that soldiers and their families are able to receive the mental health care they need. I think about the funds we raise for the United Methodist Committee on Relief for both disasters in our community and across the world. I think about the funds we raise for fuel so that the children in our schools have food to eat on the weekends. I think about the funds and food we collect for Anne's closet so that our neighbors have food to eat. I think about the funds we raise for helping hands so that when our neighbors are without power or water or gas, we are able to assist them. And Paul says, our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. It is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. As I thought about all of the missions we support, I also thought about the reality that there are times when we are the ones who are in need. The reality is that there are times when we find ourselves either personally and individually or as a congregation lacking. And this often leads to me thinking about finances. 
both personally and of the church. And it is in these moments that I find myself drawn to, unable to escape this mindset of scarcity, that there will never be enough. There isn't enough. There is no way out of this hole. There are too many things that need to be fixed. There are too many things that need to be done, and we will never find ourselves with enough. So we have to hoard. We have to hold on to everything we have. We have to severely limit what we can do for our community so that we have enough. We have to take care of ourselves before we can take care of anyone else. And I find myself tight. The tension in my body. And as I find myself rapidly descending down this spiral, I read the words from Paul. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Which means I think there is some truth in the words that we have to take care of ourselves before we can take care of anyone else. It also means that there is truth in the very fun phrase, you can't pour from an empty cup. And it is from this mindset that I return to the words from Dr. Works how we use our resources, time, money, talents, attention, is a reflection of what we believe about God and God's actions in the world. And so as we think about this giving what we have and not giving what we don't have, I think both financially, because Paul is talking about finances in this case, but I also think about the boundaries we set up for ourselves so that we are not giving more of ourselves than we have. We are not giving so much of ourselves that our bodies get sick and break down to force us to stop. And I think about when that happens, the people who send soup and tissues and hand sanitizer to your doorstep through Postmates. I think about the people who show up to leave food on your porch. The people who say, hey, I can do this thing for you because I know that you are having a hard time. Because the goal is equality. The goal is that in our time of plenty, we can offer what they need, and that in our time of need, they can offer their plenty. And so as we live out our faith and explore the ways in which God is among us, and as we live into this grace that has been given to us, and as we experience need and abundance, we are urged to have our actions reflect our beliefs about God. And one of my core beliefs about God is that God is a God of abundance. And the ways in which this congregation lives out its church's beliefs in God is that we are called to give ourselves 
to give all that we can so that our community experiences wholeness so that we can meet those who are in need. And so if God is abundance, then when we are in times of uncertainty, grace abounds. If you remember it from last week, please feel free to join in. As we give what we can, grace abounds. As we receive gifts from others, grace abounds. For those who are poor and will receive the kingdom of heaven, grace abounds. For those who hunger now and will be satisfied, grace abounds. For those who weep and will laugh, grace abounds. Thanks. Be to God. Amen. Before we invite the ushers up for our offering this morning, we have special music by Rosie Clark, and so we look forward to hearing her play today.
only regret is that my child didn't make it long enough because that is his favorite song. And so we'll have to have her play it again for him. At this time, I invite the ushers forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. O oh God, bless these, our gifts, that they are given to reflect our deep belief in you, that you are a God of abundance. O oh God, we give these gifts humbly as you have graciously given them to us. Bless them and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
you may be seated. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We do want to continue to keep Randy Boyer in our prayers. He fell again and was in the VA hospital. He is back up here at the VA home in the rehab wing again. And so he welcomes any calls and visits. Are there other joys and concerns this morning? Donna. Donna and Joe have a new granddaughter who was born on Tuesday to Logan and his wife Candace. And so her name is Magnolia June, and she is going by Maggie, which is just such a good southern name. I love it. And she was having some breathing difficulties, but it is getting better. And so we continue to keep her in our prayers, both that her breathing improves and in joy of the new life that has been brought into this world. We also keep Candace and Logan in our prayers as they adjust to life with the little one. Fair. Doyle's mother, who is having open heart surgery on July 9th, is having some pre-surgery tests done this week, and so prayers that all of those go well and produce the results needed. Appreciate the prayers for my daughter still. Um, she now has shingles on top of everything else, and so the medicine they give her for that, she's gone now. Is that Teresa? We continue to keep Teresa Adkins, Margaret's daughter, in our prayers. On top of the other things that she is dealing with, she now has shingles and is not able to keep the medicine for that down, and so we keep her in our prayers. Ellen? We want to keep Ellen's cousin, who is in the hospital in Washington State, in our prayers. She is having a couple of tests done. One is a pulmonary functioning test, and the other is a possible lung biopsy, as she might have pneumonia. So we want to keep her in our prayers. Are there any others? Let us go to God in prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the rain that has come. We give you thanks for this space in which we are invited and welcomed and loved. Oh God, we lift up to you the prayers of our hearts. Prayers for comfort and peace. Prayers in the midst of uncertainty and the waiting of test results. Prayers for healing. Prayers for hope. Oh God, we ask that we continue to recognize the places where your grace has been poured upon us. Where your healing mercies and presence is with us. Oh God, as we name our prayers together, 
And as we offer them up to you, we also acknowledge those that stay deep within our hearts. We lift up to you all that we carry in silence. We lift up to you the, the things that are so heavy they threaten to drag us down. For God, we know that we do not bear them alone. You come alongside us and lift us up and carry us when we feel as though we cannot take another step. Oh God, we also rejoice that you are present with us in all of the celebrations of life. In birthdays, and birth days, in family and in community. We give you thanks for your presence with us. Oh God, as we begin another week, we ask that you remind us of your presence with us, that you remind us of the abundance that is in you, that you remind us that in all things, Grace truly abounds. O oh God, we pray these things and all things in your Son's holy name. And it is in his name that we pray together the prayer he first taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 192, There's a Spirit in the Air.
hands as we go forth from this place. We go forth with the reminder this week as we did last week, and as we will next week, that grace abounds. In abundance and in our need, grace abounds. In sorrow and in rejoicing, grace abounds. May we open our hearts to that abounding 